Have you been hearing about this idea of stomach paralysis with the injectable weight medications? Well, today we are going to talk about it. Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you are just joining me, uh, my name is Dr. Megan. I am a board certified physician in internal medicine, lifestyle medicine, and obesity medicine. And this channel is your trusted source for evidence-based answers to your weight questions. So welcome. Today we are going to talk about this idea of stomach paralysis because if you're anything like me, you've been hearing this term on general news media or social media, and it sounds very scary about uh, stomach paralysis with weight medications, in particular with the um, injectable weight medication. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into what that means and what they're talking about. Now, when you're hearing about this term, stomach paralysis, in general, what people are referring to is the syndrome of gastroparesis. And gastroparesis is the syndrome of objectively delayed gastric emptying in the absence of a mechanical obstruction. So there's nothing preventing the food from moving out of the stomach. It's just taking a lot longer than it normally would. And side effects can include nausea, vomiting, stomach discomfort, um, early satiety, so, so feeling full a lot sooner, um, belching and bloating. Now let's also think about how these medications work in the body. So in terms of Wagovi, Ozempic, and Munjaro, so that's semaglutide and terzepatide. Essentially, one of the mechanisms of how they work is they work on that slowing of the food through the stomach. So they really strengthen that connection between the stomach and the brain, that signal that, hey, we're full. So patients are feeling fuller for longer and they have less of an appetite. Now also people can have some nausea, vomiting, some bloating, and some stomach discomfort with these medications. But I think this term of stomach paralysis is very sensationalist and not helpful because really when we think about the mechanism of how these medications work and their effect on the patient, it's really a spectrum with regards to how the patient experiences this. Now, some patients have very little or to no side effects, and some patients really lose their appetite completely. They have nausea, they have vomiting, and they really can't tolerate it. So, so yes, part of the actual way this medication is supposed to work is it is supposed to slow the transit of food through the stomach. So you're getting that effect of increased satiety, so increased fullness, and a decreased appetite. But in some patients, the side effects, the, the extent to which they are experiencing it is going to really outweigh the benefits that they are achieving because the side effects are too extreme for them to tolerate. And in that case, it might not be a good fit. But what I don't love about this term stomach paralysis is that it really conjures this idea that people's stomachs totally stop working and they're never gonna be the same again. And that's just not true. Now, I'm sure you could find a case report or two among the millions of people that are taking this that really do have long lasting effects, but that's certainly not what I've seen in clinic and it's certainly not what the literature shows either. Really what I'm seeing and what many other physicians are seeing is that there are some side effects with these medications. People do have some, maybe they have a little nausea, maybe they have a little vomiting, and maybe they do have some satiety or they really have to let their body get used to this stronger signal of decreased appetite and increased fullness and that can be a little unnerving for people. And what I've seen is either these symptoms go away with time as your body gets used to it, or a lot of people just choose to manage the symptoms. So they know, for example, that you know day two after my injection, I get a little nauseous, and so we plan then to have some nausea medication on hand. If the symptoms are pretty consistent, then we also can move things around like when people are eating their meals. There's a lot of things you can do to troubleshoot the symptoms if a patient wants to continue on the medications. Now, I would say I could probably count on one hand the number of patients that discontinue these medications, at least in my practice, um, due to side effects. And this is also why we start at a very low dose and titrate up 
to try to mitigate those symptoms and soften them a little, let your body get used to the medication so we're not blasting you with all the side effects all at once, that'd be very uncomfortable. But again, this idea that your stomach doesn't work, it's gonna be paralyzed forever. I think that's really what this term stomach paralysis is conjuring up and it's really not anything that I've seen in clinical practice and again, really nothing that the literature has shown either. Now, if we look at the literature, if you look at the New England Journal study on terzepatide in patients with obesity, and I will link all these below, um, there was a small percent, about 2 point, uh, 0.5 to 2% that were having um, nausea and vomiting at, to the extent that they discontinued um, the medication. And this was about six out of 600 patients. And if we look at the study in the New England Journal of Medicine on semaglutide and patients with obesity, um, also we see a slightly higher uh, risk of side effects, 4.5% uh, in terms of patients that discontinued due to GI side effects. But for this study, they really did not um, offer a lot of detail with regards to what those GI side effects were. So they could have been upper GI, meaning nausea, vomiting, maybe some reflux and upper abdominal pain, or also could have been diarrhea, constipation, things like that. So not as much detail uh, with the side effects of that study, but also it was pretty low. Now for those studies, they are talking about patients who have obesity but not diabetes. And diabetes has its very own risk of gastroparesis because one of the pathologies of diabetes is it really can interfere with the innervation of the stomach. So the risk profile for those patients on this medication will be a little bit different. And then of course, you may have heard about this idea of you know, preoperative clearance and concern with anesthesiologists and um, and patients who are on these GLP-1 agonists in terms of the injectables, and is that going to increase their risk of aspiration? There have been some case reports about it, but really it just comes down to talking to your anesthesiologist about any medication that you would be on before an operation. We have patients on much higher risk medications that still undergo operations, and it's just really a question of adequately communicating what you're on to your surgeon and your anesthesiologist so they can make sure that your experience is as safe as possible, whether you're on blood thinners, whether you're on seizure medication, whether you're on medication for your blood pressure, or whether you're on an injectable, an injectable medication for weight, all of that needs to be clearly communicated with your surgeon and anesthesiologist so they can make sure you have a very safe experience. So the take home message today is it's not unusual for patients to have some mild symptoms that aren't to the extent of significant gastroparesis, but it's, it's pretty common for patients to have uh, on that spectrum of side effects, mild symptoms that come with delaying the passage of food through the stomach. So maybe some nausea, maybe some vomiting from time to time. Um, but if it does become a really severe uh, side effect to the point where it is interfering with your quality of life, uh, you're just not feeling good all the time, that's definitely something that you want to talk to your physician about because it may not, these medications aren't for everybody and it may not be the right medication for you, but this whole idea of stomach paralysis, I just don't like the term, I don't think it's accurate, and I think if you're worried, have a conversation with a physician who prescribes this all the time, and they will definitely be able to walk you through this. You know, when we talk about the risks of medications, we don't always talk about the risks of not taking medications, so you always want to weigh that in terms of, okay, these are the risks of taking the medication, but the risk of not taking the medication mean I might not be adequately treating obesity if it was a problem for this patient. And then again, there are special considerations in terms of patients who have diabetes, who may have a slightly higher risk of gastroparesis uh, naturally because of diabetes, or patients who are gonna have surgery, those preoperative considerations. All of this just reinforces that it's really good to have a physician that you uh, like and trust and that you can have these open conversations with um, about your concerns. That's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my references will be listed down below and please be well.